Today we'll look at this paper, which is from 2017 and is about style transfer. Specifically, it introduces two novelties, uh, which is that the style can be arbitrary and that it runs real fast, as in in real time. We will go through the technique. It's a very simple technique. We will go through how it works as well as the intuitions behind it uh, and, well, and, uh, explore how the style transfer works. But first, let's check out what we're trying to do. So at the bottom of this paper, there are some examples. Here we go. These are the examples of what this technique actually achieves. So what we're trying to do, we give our method two inputs, a content image, which is up here. These are the content images. And these are the style images. So these are style images and these are content images. And what we're trying to do is to create an image which has a style from up here, uh, which has the content from up here and a style from on the left side. So as an example, you get images like this. Clearly, it's still the woman, but it has the style from this picture. And yeah, I mean, look at the images. Uh, the, the results are quite remarkable, actually. So let's get to it. So how, how does this technique work? The technique is pretty simple, actually. We give our method, well, two images as inputs, right? Let's draw it like this. So each one of these is one channel. So this is one image. This is our content image C, and this is our style image. It has the same dimensions, also three layers. So these are R, G, and B, three layers. And we put it through some convolutional neural network. Let's call this F. This is a convolutional neural network, which is pre-trained. So in the case of this paper, they just used VGG. It's a pre-trained network. Uh, so what we hope that after a few layers, uh, we, we get some useful features that get extracted from the image. So we cut it off after a few layers. So since it's a convolutional network, what we get is a block like this. A block like this. And I mean, every single thing here is a channel. The dimensions might be lower. Let's say it's width times height times C. Here we have width times height times three. And here we have W prime times H prime times C prime. So this is what we get. Uh, we do the same with the style image as well. We put it through the same, through the same uh, network. So what we're interested in now, now the, the question becomes, what is actually the style? How do we define the style? And the way this paper defines or kind of defines the style is, so we take one of these channels and what we want to do, so let's take the same channel over here and over here. What we want to do is to match their statistics, meaning we want to match, so let's call this uh, mu of C of f of c. So this is this channel c. We want to match this to, to have the same average as well as the same, um, the, the same variance. Uh, yes, yeah, so, so this is kind of what this paper does. It defines style to be the, uh, well, the channel wise, channel-wise statistics uh, well let's say in feature space and by statistics I mean really we're just matching uh, the average as well as the variance that's what we're matching so what this paper uh, introduces is 
what they call the adaptive instance normalization layer. And it's really very simple. So we put both of these through here. So they call this the add uh, in the adaptive instance normalization layer. So of F of C as well as F of S. And all that this does is just, uh, well, we take F of C, uh, we deduct uh, its, its average, we divide by its variance, and then we want the average and the variance, we want it to have the average and the variance of the style, so we multiply with the variance of f of s and add the average of f of s. So really what this gives us, so this is the definition of the, this new layer that they introduce, so really what this gives us is a new block like this, a new block. And notice we didn't change it pixel wise, right? We just changed the statistics of the layer to uh, match the statistics of the style that we had here. So now the question of course is, why is that the right definition for style? Why are the, just the statistics of the style, or, or, and, and why are the statistics and feature space the right definition for style? And yeah, this is certainly perplexing, and uh, that's one of the reasons why it took a while to get to this point. It wasn't clear at first, but through lots of experimentation in related work, uh, yeah, lots of experimentation in related work, this is what was found out. And in fact, some previous work did similar stuff, but uh, doing some batch normalization or instance normalization here instead of, instead of this new layer. And that's much more complicated because notice in this layer, in this new introduced layer, we have no learnable parameters, which is very nice. So all we're trying to do is just match these statistics. Maybe a word just about the intuition. What is, what is the idea? The idea is maybe that this channel here is something like mm, some specific brush stroke, something like that. Maybe it uh, recognizes some sort of brush stroke. And so then uh, if this style has a lot of that, then the average, the average here of f of s is going to be high. It's large. And so then uh, in order for our, uh, well, for our image to have the same brush stroke, we also want, want uh, the average here to be large. That's kind of the idea. So that's why, why we want to match these. So then how do we actually train this network? So the, this, this paper goes through a little bit of background explaining the history behind this whole process. So they explain how batch normalization or instance normalization was used at first and how all of this is much simpler if we just use this, what they call adaptive instance normalization because there are no trainable parameters and uh, it's really very nice. And we actually take advantage of the fact that we have two input images, which the other layers actually don't. So how do we train this then? Here's a nice infographic about how this is trained. So as I said, here we have two, two images, which we use as input. Let's call them C and F, S. This is our F. We put this through the adaptive instance normalization, as I just said. And then the only thing that we train is this decoder. This is the part of the network that we are training. It's a decoder that given this adaptively uh, instance normalized uh, image, it tries to decode it and give us a new image, which is then going to be our output. So how do we train this? Uh, there are two losses involved. There's the content loss, 
as well as the uh, style loss. So as I said, we define the this one here, the style, we define to be the statistics statistics in feature space. The content we define to be uh, just pixel-wise differences. Pixel-wise differences. But also in feature space. This is important. So how do we train this then? Uh, for the content loss, um, what we do, so we, we compare what we have at this point with what we get at this point. So once we encode our, in, our two input images and put them through the adaptive instance normalization, and at the other uh, side, we just uh, take our output image and encode it again. And these are the ones that we compare. So the content loss of our two input images so let's call what we get at this point T, the decoder we will call G, and the encoder we are still calling F, just as we have it up at the first encoder. So this is just the L2 norm of T minus F of G of T. This, this right here is our content loss. And then the style loss, what we do here is, as I said, we want to match just the, the statistics of the layers now. Uh, but that's still very similar. So we want to compare the statistics that we get uh, from our output image with the statistics of the encoded style image. So what we do is we compare, well, let's put it this way mu of f of s this is what we get from from the style image where if we encode it down here minus mu once again we, we're just comparing the statistics so in this case the average of g well yes f of g of t So this is again going this route here. So we add this as well, and we do the same thing with the variance. F of G of T. So just to be clear, both this and this, so both the uh, averages as well as well as the variances, are actually vectors. So this is a vector, this is a vector, this is a vector, and this is a vector. They have entries for every single channel. Remember the pictures from upstairs. They have entries for every single channel, so this is what we're taking this L2 norm over. So this is how we define our losses. Well, and then, yeah, then the whole training process is clear. Uh, and yeah, once we have trained it, here we have a generator. This is the generator part. And it's all actually very simple. So as I mentioned, it's not a priori clear that these the statistics matching that we're doing here for the style is the right thing. Well, but that's what we have the experimental results for. Uh, and we actually see that it is uh, quite amazing. So... Yes, so in practice, what they do here for the style loss, well, let's go over it first here. So they, they, they combine the loss to be a combination of the content and the style loss. Well, as is usual, uh, yes, this is what we discussed. This is the content loss, and then they have the style loss. They sum over a few layers. So this is what I, uh, what I omitted a little bit, but... Uh, they, they sum over a few layers here, uh, just not, not taking it at one layer, as I said, but 
yeah, summing it at a few layers. It doesn't change much conceptually. So yeah, let's look at a few images that get produced this way. So this is comparing it to a bunch of other methods. Uh, this over here, so this Chen and Schmidt method, is a very slow one. That's one that at inference you need to have an optimization procedure. So it's very slow, so it's not real time. And these two have a, a fixed amount of styles that uh, that they that they can perform the style transfer for. So meaning that we actually have to train for specific styles, which is not the case in this new method. As you saw, we can just use arbitrary styles as well as uh, do the inference very quickly. So and yeah, I mean, <laughs> the results are absolutely amazing. Plus we get this flexibility as well as the runtime advantages uh, that the other methods don't have. Yes, so, so here again, we see a little comparison. Our method is both very quick, as well as the number of styles that we can perform the style transfer for is infinite. So it wins out in these respects. Um, so yeah, maybe one last thing to mention is the fact that we can interpolate. So we can interpolate between style between styles as well as have a content style trade-off. So just by taking a, a convex combination uh, in feature space, so this is, this is nothing else but a, a convex combination, convex combination, combination in feature space, And what this gives us is already after having trained our network, we can uh, adjust how much of the uh, of, of the style we want we want in there in the output result. So what this gives us is stuff like this. So depending on what we choose alpha to be, uh, we get more or less style in there, which is nice. And also we can, in the same way, we can interpolate between different styles. So here we have interpolations between different styles. And yeah, that's also very nice because you know, you can choose the picture that you like. So th this gives you some artistic control in this way. So yes, that, that's about it. Um, I will just quickly summarize the way that we do this style transfer is by defining style to be the statistics uh, in feature space. In this case, they only match the first and second order of the statistics. Maybe more can be achieved by matching more, but then again, it also gets computationally more expensive. And in fact, this method is already used in state-of-the-art generative adversarial networks, which might be something that we will look at at some other point. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.